Well, welcome everyone to this Deco Network webinar, How to Coach a Sports Sponsorship Deal. My name is Brendan Presner, Product Marketing Manager and Evangelist here at Deco Network, and I'm joined by Mr. Embroidery himself, Eric Campbell. G'day, Eric. How are you doing? Uh, doing great and glad to be here, sir. So we're off to have a hopefully a good and informative session today. Um, I'm obviously based in uh, Sydney, Australia, and Eric, you're in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So nice time of the day for you over there. Yeah, not a bad time at all. Uh, believe it or not, we sometimes do get cool and cloudy, of course, right for the eclipse. But hey, oh, yeah. that's how things work <laughs> when you're talking about natural phenomena. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're a little further south than me, sir. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, we didn't get the eclipse, and it's, uh, it's 4 a.m. in the morning here. And that's one of the, uh, I always said, one of the curses of living in Australia. I've got to get up nice and early for these sort of events or sessions. Although one of the positives is it is 4 a.m. in the morning, it is winter, and it's only 60 degrees, so you can't complain about that. So that's a one of the benefits. <laughs> Not too bad in Sydney. Yep. All right, well, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we'll get started. Um, we'll have a few people come in as we go along through the session and I'll catch up as we get started. And today we are here to talk about uh, sports sponsorship and really how you can take advantage of that for your business. And we'll be sharing a couple of practical examples that we've learned from our own experience or from clients that we have running on, on Deco Network and their experiences that they've shared with, with us. And on today, we're gonna to talk about a couple of topics. First of all, we're going to explore what is the opportunity of the sports market for us decorators. Then we're going to take you through those first steps on how you can get involved in taking advantage of that opportunity. And then look at the actual opportunities themselves for sports related products in our industry. Then we're going to give a bit of a, uh, a story about how to work your way to the top, a path to the top with sports sponsorship. And then Eric's going to take us home with some tips on e-commerce. So if you're ready, Eric, we'll jump into it. Absolutely. All right. So what is the opportunity of sports for us decorators? Well, it's a massive market and the world of sports apparel market is estimated by the year 2020 to be worth $184.6 billion. That's US dollars, real dollars in terms of the market opportunity out there. And that can seem like a huge number and you're thinking, well, look, I'm just a, a local decorator. That's really you know, I'm not going to be a billion dollar business anytime soon. What is it involved for me? Well, the great thing about sports, most of us here have been involved in sports in some way or another, or we have kids or friends or family involved in sports, is it really literally does start with your local clubs. And that's where as local businesses, we can put our attention on and focus our attention on and start off with, because it's the easiest market to get involved with. You probably have a relationship with them already and it can lead which we'll talk about later a path to the top and get you into those large lucrative sports sponsorship deals so now that we understand really what the potential of this market can be eric why don't you walk us through some of those first steps that you can get in to get that ball rolling absolutely as you said it does all start locally and you know we're going to talk a little bit about what your everyday customer might be who looks like they're coming in for that first small order you know People get worried about the larger national companies who are coming over to take promotional products and printing, but really, this is the bread and butter of how these things start. So let's get the ball rolling, uh, like your pun there, Brendan. <laughs> let's meet Jack, your everyday sports playing customer. Now, Jack plays football on the weekend or soccer, depending on where you're located. Uh, maybe he's an accountant for his day job. Uh, you know, he's got something he's doing in the day like most of us do, so he's doing club sports. Uh, he gets tasked with finding the team's new jerseys. He's got to get the kit for the new team. So, you know, he's got to go out there and look for himself. What does he do? He starts out by doing some searches online. And luckily, the way Google works, you get those top links from your local sources right under the ads. And so he's going to find a local printer. You know, Jack wants to go in and then touch it, touch and feel the uh, quality of the garments. He wants to see what he's working with, and he definitely doesn't want problems. So he's going to go local. He's got 15 jerseys. So that's all he's really looking for is to get his team kitted out. Now, we all know the 15 jerseys isn't a huge amount. They're really custom, but he's going to ask for that bulk discount because truthfully, we all know this is an evening thing. This is a weekend thing. He, he's with a volunteer team. So he's going to want a discount for those jerseys. And, you know, that might be hard for us. We don't always like to give that discount, especially 15 pieces. That's mostly just above some people's minimums, let alone a bulk. Mm. But, hey, you know. The jerseys look great, he likes them, he gets the order put through, maybe you give him the discount and that's all you do. Eh, you don't love that, but hey, you give him the discount, he buys the jerseys, but the team doesn't make the finals and that's where the order ends. In a typical order, 
this typical engagement with a printer that doesn't have a whole lot of vision, that's where it ends. Yeah. One order, 15 jerseys, probably discounted, and that's it. You know, maybe you got some good pub out of the guy because he does like what you've done, but that's the end. But it doesn't have to be the end. So let's say you have a, pr a printer who's uh, not so normal, has a little bit of vision. This printer sees an opportunity. This decorator says, okay, yeah, there, maybe there's a discount, but that doesn't have to be about being less revenue for me. I mean, sure, we're going to give a discount, but this discount could be a promotional opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we all know what this is. When you do sponsorship, you get to put your logo on the garment, and at least that's something you can do. You should advance this. Um, not everybody thinks about it. Usually you give them a discount and, or you say you're a sponsor and maybe they want to put you in an advertisement somewhere. Maybe they put you on a printed calendar or some sort of contact sheet or a program. But really, give a decent discount and you can put your logo prominently on the garment itself. And that's really a value. Uh, you want to exchange that discount for real value for your business. And honestly, having that logo there is real value. Certainly, we're going to talk about it with events. When they're at these events, the logo's there, it's prominent, everybody who's there sees it, and that's the conventional kind of way you're going to get branding to be value for the business. Yeah, absolutely. When I started off in the industry, Eric, back in uh, the 1990s, uh, the company I worked for focused primarily on sports, sports apparel, um, because they were huge sports fans themselves. They played in local football teams, soccer teams, swim teams, um, local surf clubs. And it got to the point, and maybe I was just a little bit more conscious of that because I lived in the town, that when I was walking around, I just saw our company logo everywhere on the back of people's shoulders because we made a, an effort of actually co-branding our product with our logo through sports sponsorship. And it became a value add not only to us, but people looked for those advanced design apparel because it said quality printing. Oh, absolutely. And that's where you get that real top of mind awareness. If you just have your name out there, that's the first thing you get from this value. Top of mind awareness, people know that you're a printer, plus they associate you with that sports apparel. Yeah. But that's not all you can do with this. So let's say Jack's printer has more vision than just that, more than just that sponsorship and sees another opportunity. Well, there's 15 more people on that team that not just Jack. So we have to imagine every single one of them is going to receive a packaged garment that you've printed that has your logo on it. And that means each one of them with all of their other constellations of things they do might be another customer for you. So maybe you have a teacher, maybe you have a clerk at an office at uh, some big utility. Uh, maybe there's a waiter, a cleaner. So there's a restaurant, there's a cleaning service, there's a plumber, plumbing service, truck driver, there's someone who delivers packages, cashiers, retail stores, security guard, landscapers. Maybe they're members of another team in another season. So now you've got another team just directly in sports. These are all the people you might influence with what you do with the branding on those products. And honestly, in the shop that I used to work in, that's something we specifically did. So let's say, okay, see, we have the jerseys here. Names on them, that's great. That's one good thing. But that's not all you can do. So in this case, we're actually going to talk about an instance from one of our licensees of Deco Network. They decided to put a care card with instructions to avoid damage to the print and the garment in each packaged piece. What does that mean? Each one of these 15 people on that team now has this card in their hand. Number one, they know you care about your garment. They know you care about the print and that you're professional. You know what you're doing because it gives the instructions on how to take care of it. But number two, you now have one more chance to market to these people. Here's the care instructions on the front. It tells them just how to take care of it. There's your logo. There's the care instructions. But flip it over and each one of these people now has a call to action. Do you need some printed products for your own business? And here's a discount. There's a discount coupon code you can use right in your e-commerce store. And once again, there's your logo. So each one of these people has an incentive to come back and become your customer for an unrelated reason. So here's this incentive for other team members to use their printing service. And honestly, I'm going to go ahead and share one from when I was a decorator. We had a very small order, a very small uniform order, very much like the one we're describing in this use case. And it was for a water polo team. And now you can imagine in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, you might think <laughs> water polo doesn't sound like something we do, but yeah. there was. So here's this oddball order, right? 12 pieces for a water polo team. Uh, nobody else would take it, couldn't get it done. We decided to take this smaller order, and we did just this. We logoed the order. We gave them care instructions. We helped them out. We actually helped them with the design work. So that was another value add we provided. And in the end, it turns out the person who's purchasing for this order works for the only uh, power utility in the state. 
and we end up getting a larger part of the market value from that power utility. We were doing some of their stuff, but we were entered into new divisions we wouldn't have been otherwise. Yeah, that's so, awesome. You never know. You never know who's behind these small orders or who's behind these team orders. Someone on a water polo team might be an important administrator at a larger company. Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier, Eric, one of our licensees started off in Deco Network in 2011. Um, just a small at-home garage printer, uh, printing by himself with his brother's friend volunteering his time to help put T-shirts on this brother printer and take it off. So he literally was a single trader working at home, 22 years old. And he started to deploy this strategy. First of all, he got sick of people complaining about print falling off because they took them home, stuck it in a bucket of soaking chemicals, bleach, and ironed it. And in the end, he was the one suffering those phone calls of people complaining about the quality of the garment. So that solved that problem. But then on the backside, he did give that 5% discount. And that went out with every single garment. And he went out from being a small printer, just starting off with zero turnover, to having a couple of hundred thousand dollars turnover in his first year. And he attributed this to his initial success because it got value out to his clients. Um, as he realized, he's dealing with people that are volunteering and doing other work in other organizations. And typically, if you're volunteering in one sports group, they're probably a volunteer type person, so maybe they're volunteering for the local fire or the local um, canteens or the schools, so they've got that extra traction into other markets. But he gave value for them to come back with that small discount. And for him, it was only 5% as well. Um, but another important point to add as well is he didn't undervalue his products. He didn't sell a $5 C. He realized he was selling a value with his um, products and put in a decent markup. So that gave him the wiggle room to be able to afford to give that 5% discount and help build up his business to the point where he could slow down doing that and add those cards when he felt they needed to increase his business. But it got him out there and got him started in the industry. Well, especially when you're talking about these volunteers, everyone talks these days about influencer marketing, and they're usually talking about somebody on Instagram who's got a lot of followers. But who are the real influencers when you're talking about volunteer organizations like that? It's the people who are the organizers who are willing to go out and do these orders. So what you really want to do is incentivize them and make things as easy as you can for them. Yeah, absolutely. So just like Brendan said, you never want to undervalue your value. So what this means is when you give them that discount, don't just give a discount blanket and it's great that you did it, it buys goodwill, that's fine, but get something back in return. Get that marketing bid, get that logo on their garment. Most of them are quite happy to do it. And frankly, this lets you leverage these opportunities from the sponsorship, from the discounts. Go ahead and move that into new business because honestly, when you ask, you're going to get some of these this leverage from them. They have no problem because you're working with them. You become a partner, especially when you're talking about these volunteers. Yeah, absolutely. And again, from our experience back in advanced design, it became a positive. People loved having our logo on the back of their garments because we built a reputation of being a company that cared about local organizations, that gave value to them. Um, but also, we became a symbol of quality. People knew we did good work, and they were proud to wear an advanced design garment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you do good work, uh, when you take care of the people who are with you, who are your partners, and I consider all of the customers to be partners, yeah. um, that's what's going to go through. You're going to build that up. That's that goodwill. So it's good to make sure that the branding's there. The branding will lead it off. And the way you treat the people, the customer experience, that's what's going to seal the deal. Yeah. Awesome. So obviously, Eric, you've printed many garments. You've worked with many different companies. Talk us through some of the real opportunities for sports products out there. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I'm not going to cover everything that's on this slide, and later on, guys, when you need this information, we can get this to you. But what I'm going to tell you is that it's more than just uniforms, but sure, it starts with uniforms, right? Uh, surf clubs, bowling, karate, we have all these different clubs that you could be uh, doing uniforms for, and it's not just clubs, it's schools. It's all the different ways you could do sports. So that's there. You have corporate teams. You never know when there might be a corporate golf, corporate kickball. I know one of the big places that we worked with is we worked with WACA, which is a huge organization that did kickball. And we also did the individual team garments for the people in Waka. Uh, dance and cheer. So you might not think of that necessarily. You're thinking about doing uniforms, but dance and cheer, there's tons of stuff that's in dance and cheer, especially when you go beyond just the uniforming and you get onto a uh, booster and spirit wear. Um, extreme sports, why not? Uh, you know, motocross, stuff like that. They're, these people all have printed garments. It may be that they're different kinds of printed garments, but it's all stuff that you can source even if you don't do the work yourself. So fitness clubs. I know the little local gym I go to has a, a right in the front door has a little round rack with garments on it. It's not a lot, 
but you can imagine it they change out those garments frequently that's something that has a constant turnover at retail prices so they're looking for someone to, pr to provide those garments marathons and fun runs event-based stuff is great because usually what you get is a lot of real simple prints uh, larger numbers certainly per order and you can do these big marathons these fun runs these events and it ends up being a great driver especially when you do that sports sponsorship because the people are watching that event and that event is going to have a lot of uh, spectator uh, spectator action as well as the people who are wearing stuff um, high profile athletes if you can get something interesting a cool decoration you get it onto the back of someone who's uh, in a high profile uh, state or say like you have a local Olympian or someone who's trying out they end up in news stories they're wearing your stuff that's another great bit of exposure plus it helps with buy-in because that's social proof saying these elite athletes like your product and of course it all starts with local teams so no matter what your local team is no matter what they're doing if it's you know from football and soccer to curling get on in there talk to the people the local teams and especially if you do have like Brendan said you very likely have these personal relationships that's the best kind of niche marketing if you understand a sport and you're connected to the sport that's the first place you should start because you'll be comfortable talking to them about it and you know what they need yep absolutely and that's actually a really good segue into the next part which is a path to the top and what I'd like to share with you is my own personal experience working in a custom decorated apparel company that really had an owner that saw the vision and saw the opportunity and actually led to him having the largest value contract for decorated apparel in Australia and as Eric said it all started with the local sports club so in this example, uh, in our particular example, we actually worked with Surf Life Saving Clubs. But I've translated this into a more universal example of football or soccer, as uh, Eric calls it. And this really is a common pattern of most sports clubs or even many organizations where they're multi-layered. And you can aim high, you can go for that big national contract and try to compete against large companies, but you're probably not going to get there from day one. You're just not going to be able to get that tender, you won't have the experience, or more importantly, the contacts to get you that contract that you need. And this is the vision that my old boss had, and he realized if he started local, he can work his path to the top. And this is exactly what he did. So in this example, you've got a football team, the local Wyong football team. They're based on the east coast of Australia, but they are a part of the local regional division called the Central Coast. Within the Central Coast, there was 10, 15 teams, and they competed in their local tournaments against each other. But the great thing about sports clubs and most layered organizations like sports clubs is there are these multiple divisions. The Central Coast Division, the best player of those, came out to form the Central Coast team that played against the other divisions in the state of New South Wales, and they had their state divisions. And then the best of those players formed out to become a member of the New South Wales team and competed at a national level against all the other states. And those who were really awesome, of course, went all the way and became national representatives and competed internationally against other teams. But he realized he saw a path to the top that he could get those national contracts if he started working local with his local teams first. And this is exactly what he did. So he, obviously, big sports family. They were involved in local football clubs, surf life saving clubs, um, soccer clubs. And that's really what got them involved in the decorated apparel industry. And I still hear that constantly today when I speak to new signups in Deco Network. Typically, they were a customer that were buying garments for their local club or for their local business and realized, you know what? That was actually a lot of fun and I was pretty good at that and I could probably do this as a business myself. So it's a common pattern. And maybe that's how you got involved into decorating yourself. But they were members of local sports clubs. They struggled to find the products and the services they need, so they started the business and off they went off on their on their business. So they had those local contacts. They were doing local printing in sports clubs. We were doing the sponsorship deals as we as we spoke about Eric earlier, and Eric talked about putting the logo on the back. And our logo and our brand became known in our local area. Like I said, I'd walk around town and I'd see our logo on the back of all these jackets and jerseys that we had done as a part of our sports sponsorship. So people knew about us, and we really built that local reputation. Well, our owner realized that's a door into that next layer as a part of these sports organizations. And as a member of the local football clubs, he spoke to the presidents of the club. said, look, you know, obviously you've got contacts in the local division area. Can you introduce me to the local division manager? 
and they did that. They gave them an introduction to the local division manager. Once he built that relationship and it was a referral trusted relationship, he then obviously had access from the local division manager down to all those other local clubs. So now not only was he doing work for Wyong Football Club, but he's doing it for Gorikan and Budjiboy and the other local clubs in that area because he had that referral introduction from the local division manager and could pass on those same values and discounts he's giving to the local sports clubs. Once he's built up that relationship with the regional division manager, he saw his next opportunity was to get an introduction to the state level division manager who managed all those other regional division managers. And he got that introduction. He attended their meetings, he put forward tenders for the services, and through that, the state division manager referred them to the other local division managers who then in turn can refer them down to the local clubs. And quite soon, it continued on. Again, he got a referral to the state level and the national level, who then introduced him to other states. And suddenly now we were doing printing for Victoria and for Queensland, states that we weren't even uh, areas that we weren't even close to, thousands of kilometers away because of that introduction level. And that led to us as a company eventually securing the largest single decorated power order in Australia. It took a couple of years, of course, it took a while to get from the top, but he realized if he started with his local relationships that he knew, got referrals. And referrals are really important because they're a trusted handshake. I know this person, I've worked with them, they work for me, it worked out well, I recommend you should use them. And he did use that as his path to the top to get him from local to regional to state and finally to a national level. Now maybe you don't want national level, maybe you're happy for local clubs in your area. Still using this same model, you can get that introduction to that next level regional division manager who can introduce you to the 15, 20 clubs in your area and maybe that's perfectly fine for your business. Or maybe like my boss, you had aspirations to go all the way to the top and go to the next level and move on from regional state to national. Now obviously through that, um, we had other introductions to other sports areas because through the tags and the coupon codes, you get introductions to people who might also do soccer, but then also do local dance clubs or local bowling clubs or fire or other organizations. And that same level also applies. You find that most organizations of a fairly large size have that layered approach. But again, starting local, starting small, and leveraging from relationships and handshakes and moving up each level, then that's your easiest and quickest way to a path to the top. So Eric. I, I can't agree more with that. I mean, honestly, that pathway, it works not only in sports, it works in all sorts of multi-level organizations. I know that we've done very much the same uh, in our shop working with uh, real estate, actually. I know we're talking about sports sponsorship here, but I want you guys to know that if you're doing multiple different kinds of things, if you're not just a sporting company, the same thing works. We will start with a local real estate office and went up to the national level doing the very same thing. Mm. It's all about building that trust because that's social proof. So really listen to this model, folks. If you put in the time, and that's the thing, it's, it's hard, no, no lie. There's gonna be some time in between. You have to keep showing up, you have to be involved, but if you're willing to be involved, if you're willing to build that goodwill, you will move up if you try. Yeah, and certainly from what, uh my boss uh, attributes, or my ex-boss attributes, attributes to, and he actually did claim this to be his reason for his success, that this model was what led him to the top and eventually sell his business off and retire happily. Um, but what he really bashed home to me was, it was all about relationships, that no one knows him on a state level. And if he walked into a state level meeting and threw his services around and his name around, no one knew him, that he did leverage that relationship and made sure he got that literal handshake introduction from one level to another and build that level of trust. Absolutely. And you might wonder, as we go on here, you're like, how does e-commerce fit into this, right? Because we're going to move into this, hitting a home run with e-commerce. And I'm going to say, you know, e-commerce is a natural fit. And you're thinking, e-commerce, well, isn't that less personal? Hmm. And I'm going to tell you, no, it's not, because it's a tool. There are multiple ways to use e-commerce. The traditional way that people think about it is I set up a website, I leave it there, and it's the what they always say is the 24-hour salesman, which I think is a really poor way to think of your website. Your website is a tool, like a catalog, like any other tool you use. It's not everything that you need, and you still have to have personal relationships. But however, e-commerce is a natural fit for working with, uh, with, working with sports because you're going to be a partner as a sponsor. You're going to be a partner with your, with your people that you're working with. Now, the first thing is, we're gonna provide these tools that make everything easier. The first thing, online ordering is easy. It's going to save your buyer, that volunteer we talked about, it's gonna save them time and trouble. 
No more chasing people or organizing their order forms. No more coll collating the orders, getting all the sizes and stuff put together. Uh, no more personal risk. They don't have to pay for things themselves. They don't have to be the one who might have lost a form because the online ordering will allow you to have individual ordering that's easy for people to do collates itself so all of this automation is going to take responsibility off the back of that volunteer that person who's actually coming to your company and making their life easier yeah and I think your, your point of um, online ordering or e-commerce not just being about impersonal is an old-fashioned way of looking at it um, and it's probably the industry's fault we haven't thought of a better term for it we still associate with e-commerce and online meaning go away go to my website I don't want to speak to you um, and you're going to fail if that's your your business model. You're not going to be that personal relationship <laughs> totally. in business. But you know what we see the success of e-commerce being and online being is, as you've just said, it's that extra level of protection to a personal relationship. You still have that meeting. You still have that handshake. But you're verifying everything electronically online. Is the colors correct? Is the order correct? Is everything all correct? And that's really the power of e-commerce and online. Well, and you're also making it easy for their end users. If you want to think about it, their customer, these, these volunteers, these people who buy generally, these people have a customer in the individual team members, and now those team members can do their ordering whenever they want to, however they want to, and they don't really have to even go through uh, this buyer, this person who's in the middle. So yep. you get, it's like all of the relationship with none of the risk and pain. Absolutely, yeah. And it turns the buyer into a promoter, and that's the best part of this. The person who's usually tasked with being a buyer, being a shopper, now all they have to do is take a, the link that you give them, take the information you give them, and promote it to the team. Maybe they have to give them a little bit more information, but that's it. They give them a, a closed date for when you're done with your ordering, especially when we're talking about uniform orders. And they promote the link, they send it out to all their people, and they're done. That's all they have to do is maybe maybe a couple of reminders, that's it. But it's not the same as when you used to have a buyer who's warning around, like I said, doing paper order forms, sticky notes, taking calls, putting it all together, collating one order, hopefully getting all the names put together, and having to deliver that and write a check either out of their club funds or their personal funds. Yeah, while putting the kids through school, picking them up from a sports event, yeah. shopping and feeding the dog, right? <laughs> so. Absolutely. It's easy for things to get lost in this way. You just don't have that problem, and you make their lives so much easier. Also, it eliminates so many errors, and this is great for them, but it's best for us as decorators. I cannot tell you how many times, because there's even errors sometimes when people do the list. The thing is, you take those errors, even though when there are errors, off of the shoulders of that buyer once again they don't have to be the person in charge of these errors of charge of verification because everything is verified by the individual buyer the team members themselves the spelling of any names or personalization the size selection and the other thing that can happen too is sometimes people buy in kits but you'll find uh hey the human body and i know my body's not very normal i'm a big guy Sometimes people have different sizes for, say, tops and bottoms. Maybe they have a different desire for their t-shirt size versus their jersey size. This way, the size selection is all on the part of the person who's actually going to wear it or the person who's sponsoring them, who's working with them. If it's, a, if it's kids, it's the parents. So the size selection, no longer on the buyer's back, no longer their problem. And decoration. Um, if there are differences in decoration that might be done, these things are all going to be looked at by the person who's wearing it, by the person who's ordering it, and directly verified. Yeah. And also, here, this is a huge one, and I know because working with people from all kinds of organizations, not just sports, this removes payment problems. Because an e-commerce solution is going to allow you to arrange payment individually, as you see, members pay individually, it means that the buyer doesn't have to take it all together, doesn't have to collect money, doesn't have to hound the five or six people out of the 30 who haven't gotten their money in on time, or like I said, take on that risk themselves. Say they've only got two people who haven't paid and they decided to pay out of pocket. I, can, I remember in the bad old days of working on all paper how that was, where someone would come in and just kind of grit their teeth and pay out of their own pocket to get the, the order underway. And for us, it means that without fail, we're going to be paid for, for production. Um, this allows us, because we're using this transactional model that is very much what a customer would be used to from a website, from other e-commerce sources, it's more likely for them to go ahead and pay it ahead rather than want to do any sort of, you know, distribution afterwards or to do some sort of like uh, securing it with a small uh, amount up front first. This way, each member pays us. We are paid. We know that we're getting the money that we need uh, to do the production ahead of time. Yeah. 
And also, it allows us to set very clear expectations. When you have this one buffer of the uh, e-commerce site, you get one more chance to say things to that end customer before they order. So you get graphical previews first. What does this mean? They're going to see all the decoration and the personalization live. If you have a tool like Deco Network that allows for those live personalizations, they can look and see exactly how things are going to look, where they're going to be placed on the garment, and there's no question about what they're going to get. Same thing with store policies. You get to put store policies right up front. If they're worried about um, you know, charges, returns, anything else that's gonna be built into your e-commerce store, they can look that up and they can understand ahead of time on their own. It doesn't become the buyer's uh, deal to have to explain everything to them. And then delivery dates. It gives you a chance one more time to tell them how long things take to be uh, printed and put together. And if you've organized a delivery date, you can even have another chance to uh, send them a message individually to return to them and say, hey, your dates are going to be this after we do the production, especially when you're doing batch ordering. So individual orders, also the best thing equals easy distribution. Because the orders are coming into an e-commerce system individually, they're already separated. Uh, if you have a system like ours that will allow you to do batch production, that's great. You get all the production done, but it easily has all the information put together for each one of these team members so that you can you know, bag, tag, and pack everything individually have it ready so that even if you have one person picking them up physically because you can set yourself up for that um hey you can do shipping if you desire and have to ship directly but even if you're not and you're doing that big pickup as as teams often do you'll have everything labeled ready to go you've got your setups individually by the order and it's simple it's something that's done automatically now so you still have to package them but instead of packaging them off of some big spreadsheet you're going to get your individual orders and you can fill them just like any other online order Yep, and don't forget to include that care tag and coupon code in each order as well. Absolutely. That's the last step. And remember, you make sure that coupon code's good for your e-commerce store. Yep. So the other thing, for digital decorators especially, this is where I talk about the, the best part of having, say, an online designer as we have, uh, is you can service the stragglers. There's always a couple people who don't have their stuff together, who don't order on time. There's one more kid who wants something, uh, Sometimes you'll have brother or sister who wants a matching piece who's just going to be in the stands. Those stragglers are very easily serviced by small batch production. And the great thing is, if you have an online design tool that provides you with production-ready files, it's really simple. They can do this after the fact. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be also necessarily related to the major order. If you're using a small batch production and it's okay for you to get these small single orders if you price them appropriately, all you have to do is have that same kind of graphic assets that you would have had for the other stuff and let them come in and do digital decoration piecemeal one at a time. Just as long as you price it correctly, it allows those stragglers to come in and still be serviced uh, and to be done quite easily, especially, like I said, when you have those production-ready files, it's a much easier process. Yeah. So the other thing to remember is once you start with e-commerce, yeah, maybe you do it for a uniform buy, and that's great. You can set it up, do all that stuff, but... If you get in touch with these people, build this relationship, you can ask them, hey, what about boosters? What about spirit wear? What about special events that you guys do? Can we make shirts for that and put those on the store? So instead of having just an event-related store or a seasonal store, it doesn't cost you more to leave it up when you have an affiliate store. Leave it up all year and have spirit wear related to that particular art. Uh, set up event-based decorations so they can do events. Say they're doing a car wash to benefit the uh, team. You can actually create these shirts and have them purchasable by the people who are down the road. Or, like I said, boosters. Uh, boosters, moms, dads, people who are involved, the coaches who want to have other kinds of apparel that aren't uniforms can be placed with that normal apparel you would use to service like business to business, but do it direct to customer. Uh, gifts, so you could do gift stuff. Let's say you do like sublimation or other hard goods printing. You could even do license plates, key tags, anything you can imagine. These things that can be all done with digital decoration directly from the site, and you can have a year-round store. So we talked about how you get to other businesses. So say you have all those introductions to get to other businesses, that's one great thing. And we talked about how you get to other teams through that path to the top. This is a way to get to all the other people surrounding the team, all the people surrounding that. And also, once again, put those tags and all those things, all those garments, all those gifts, and you have one more way to market even further out. Yeah. Or and even just rock up to one of the games with a laptop, a 4G card, and a 50 to $100 pull-up banner, and you can sell decorated apparel at the event. 
Uh, you know, at the event, our fans, they're, they're fanatics. They're supporting their team. And if they can buy a printed T-shirt with their team logo on the back or front, they're going to want to do that. And at the same time, you can set up an arrangement with that team to donate a portion of their sales directly to that team. It shows that you support them as a business, but also other business owners are going to be there watching their kids play. And that's another way you can connect, build new relationships, and sell more decorated apparel. Well, I know one of our partners that we've worked with before also who, who does a heat press printing, I was actually at a trade show in a booth and one of the people I got to talk to when I was talking about this heat printing they did, that's all they did. They started their entire business because their kid was in a wrestling team and they were there at the wrestling match and you know the kid's only on the mat every once in a while. Most of the time you're just sitting in the stands doing nothing. They ended up starting with their high school, setting up a booth and doing just that. They were also doing some on-site decorating, but the thing is whatever they couldn't fulfill, they could then use e-commerce, like you said, have a, a laptop and a connection up, let them design their own stuff and then fulfill it later down the road. The great thing is, as we all know, purchasing is emotional and emotions are running yep. high when you're in an event like this. Yep. This is the time to get people. This is when they're motivated. So it's a great way to use that on-site marketing. Yep. And as you said, fundraising. Uh, when you have e-commerce, a lot of the e-commerce uh, tools are going to allow for not just this ease of use, but for ease when you're doing fundraising. Because when you do campaigns, say you have one shirt, a type of garment you want to do just for a campaign for fundraising, you can set up a one-off campaign shirt, rock that out, promote it shortly, and have it come on and off the site very quickly. And it's something that's easy to promote on social media. You rock the campaign out. And then the great thing is with e-commerce, Automation means easy accounting. You set how much you want that markup to be, how much that commission would be for them. Same thing, you could do an affiliate year round. You, it wouldn't have to be a campaign, but no matter how you want to do this, you can set up easy accounting where you say this percentage of what these things are, are made for, we mark up, and this is just what we deliver. And the accounting is done for you automatically, so there's no, you know, there's no bickering, there's no going back, uh, recalculating, having to go through the books. At the end of your period, you just say, this is what we owe you, and you hand them over the check for fundraising, and it's easy to do. Yeah. One of our clients in Europe, actually, um, they were a classic printer, um, you know, just waiting for bulk orders to come along. They didn't really have a sales team. Um, they got with Deco Network, and along came one of their clients who wanted to get some printed running jerseys, marathon jerseys done, marathon vests, I, th I think they're called, um, and they're obviously attended. A marathon they needed to get X amount of vest printed off well that person saw an opportunity because they had a system that allowed them to create their own store to add their own markup and raise a bit of money they saw an opportunity to sell those running vests to their other friends and their other businesses that they knew were also attending marathons and they created a pure marathon running vest affiliate store underneath this everyday ordinary printer well, now this one single affiliate store is now this printer's main source of income. Why? Because they were connected with an individual that was passionate about an industry and a space and sold their products out into the market. So the printer literally is not doing any of the selling. He's just collecting these orders from these passionate people with these stores targeting an industry or a market that they're passionate about. And that's the power of the, uh, the affiliate model. Oh, absolutely. And like we said, when you make things easy for people, they're going to come back because most people, they're passionate. These are the things they do on the side, but they don't have a lot of time. If you make it easy for them and if you make it easy all the way around for everyone concerned, you benefit, they benefit, and it causes a lot of return ordering. Plus, you're right. that Talking about that specifically, that's one of those niches. If you find an underserved niche like that and actually market into it and become associated with it, say you do that sponsorship so you appear on all of those vests, now everybody stops and says, okay, you know, Brand X Printing are the people who do marathons. Yep. And if you're a marathoner, you talk to the next marathoner down the road, you meet someone else in running and go, oh, well, I know who can do that for you. You don't know where to get those? Brand X Printing. I did it with them before or I saw them at the last X fun run or X event. So that stuff really can spread like wildfire and it can become a center for profit for you. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and it's perfectly tailored to the sports market. Yeah, and e-commerce is really the glue that makes it work the best. Yeah. So the way I like to say it is, as an e-commerce sponsor, you're no longer a commodity. 
And the reason is because as a sponsor, you're giving people these tools that make their lives easier. It's not just about making the ordering process. You have to think about it. It's their life. If you don't spend time on this stuff, it's more time that you have for yourself. It's more time for your passion. And I know certainly having done some uh, volunteer work for things I was passionate about before, sometimes that grunt, grinding through paperwork becomes something that kind of sours that passion project of yours because you end up doing more of that than the thing you love to do. So making it easy for them is absolutely paramount to making them happy and making their lives better. So what I like to say, printed shirts are everywhere, but great customer experiences aren't. Mm. Make it easy. And that's not just in the e-commerce, but the e-commerce is a big part of what can do it for you automatically. It's in everything you do. Make it easy for folks. And I think even when we're talking about the uh, including the washing instructions, that's another way to make it easy. Remove questions. No one likes to have these untied up loops laying around. They don't want these ends. Clean them up for people. Let people understand how to take care of the garments. Let people understand exactly when their uh, shirts are going to get done or exactly when their garments will be done. Let them know exactly how the printing is going to look through the uh, online designer. And these things make things easy, gives them confidence, and that kind of confidence is what you're going to get in return orders. Yep, and I think you touched on it earlier. You know, we're dealing with people involved, particularly in the sports area, primarily volunteers. They're not earning an income from this. They're doing it in their spare time. And let's face it, no one has spare time anymore. So the easier you make it, you're going to be an attractive business to redo business with, and they're going to be accountants. They're going to be school teachers. They're going to be truck drivers. They're going to be members of other sports teams. If you make it easier to deal with them on one job, you're going to be easier to deal with them on all their future needs for decorated apparel. Oh, and when you build that website, you better believe that people are going to come back to it because they understand the value of what you've built. And I don't like to use the word lock-in because I don't want people to feel yep. like they're locked down or can't go somewhere else. But that's what a lot of people call it is lock-in. What I'm going to say is when you make a nice channel for the water to flow in uh, in a river, it always likes to return to that channel. So the easiest place, the least uh, effort they have to expend – that's what they're going to do. So if you have that website already in place, let's say you did, like I said earlier, and you've made some other spirit wear things so it stays up all year, it's not in, something they have to call in to get activated, then they're going to go back to that over and over again. Yep, absolutely. All right, well, thank you, Eric, for those awesome tips. Now we are running out of time. We did go over a little bit over our, our length. We thank everyone for attending. But Eric, we've got a download for them to get access to to find out more about what we've spoken about today. Do you want to walk us through that? Uh, absolutely. If you go to deconetwork.com slash ebooks, you're going to go ahead and see these links to not only the sports sponsorship ebook, but we also have our second ebook up, which is our social media ebook. And this is something that could be helpful for you too. Uh, it's how to make your mark in social media, and it'll help you if you're just getting started in social media and marketing to uh, develop your own following. So all you have to do is go in here, uh, give us your information, and we'll send you a link to download this PDF ebook that's full of these valuable tips. Now, if you wanna go back to the sponsorship book, I would suggest you do because it's all the stuff we talked about but in more detail with more graphical examples and like all the stuff that was on that slide where I was telling you kind of the different markets you get into, you can read that at your leisure and have all the detail there. So go ahead and go there to deconetwork.com slash ebooks and you'll find all of our ebooks including ebooks that are going to be coming up in the future. So I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag on the next topics just yet but we have more ebooks in the works and I know of several that are really going to be useful to you guys. Yep, absolutely. And we will make a uh, copy of this recording available uh, a little down the track. Um, but Eric, thank you always for your wisdom and your time and your input. Um, and we thank all of you for attending. We hope you can attend us future webinars. And of course, head over to that site, decanetwork.com slash ebooks, download that digital copy. As Eric said, packed full of a whole lot more information and a whole lot more to come. So thank you everyone. And thank you, Eric. Oh, and thank you, Brendan, for uh, getting up early and sharing all the information you had from your personal experience. And thank you for hosting. So, And thank you to everyone who came. Uh, we're happy to have you, and we hope to see you again. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.